load up another trip that's all we do this summer is travel kk we're like the little traveling family circus that's right the old boot scooting you can can you see hot rod is headed to shreveport louisiana hello huh hello hey forkhead so we're headed to shreveport so I can get my back tattooed, which is something I've wanted to do since forever. We put it off year after year after year. So this year we're finally starting. And I bought about a five gallon bucket's worth of tattoo numbing cream. I've never got to use this stuff before, but I'm getting older and I'm getting softer. And I was very excited about using something to make the tattoo not hurt as bad. And we forgot it. Couple 56-ish Chevys. So I know this route very well because I used to drive it in my 64 a lot uh, when I was stationed down here and would come up here for family whatever. Uh, but we are going to drive by some other YouTubers actually. Lance at uh, Turn and Rust or the Restored Channel. They have they own both of them. Uh, he owns Craven Customs. They always got some wacky oddball stuff and they've had wacky oddball stuff for as long as i can remember ever driving through the small town of bogata which we'll be passing through before too long and they're right off the highway kind of how i'm right off the highway so i'll show you some of their funky stuff as we drive by who knows maybe they'll be out there recording right there some of their junk i know yep that's their shop right there then I'm sure y'all recognize some of this stuff too. Hey, I tried to buy that sucker and he beat me to it. He had a little Metro Mike looking, it's actually wheelies. And that thing popped up for a thousand dollars in Oklahoma. I messaged the lady and said, I'll send you the money right now. I'll come and get it. Cause I knew it was a good deal. It got marked as stinking sold like that. Cause someone else knew it was a good deal. It popped back up on Facebook for $3,500. And I was going, you know what? That's more than I want to spend. But I was actually considering it because those things are awesome and it was the right color. Next thing I know, it's marked, sold. And then after that, Lance Dunn posted on his Facer book that uh, he bought one and had it incoming and posted a picture of the dang thing. Oh! I couldn't get the camera going fast enough. We just passed two dads in the 620s. I can find them even on accident. We've officially made it to Ratchet City. We made it back. I know. You got it, girl. You got it. You shouldn't have brought your whole, whole bedroom. Stop <laughs> it. So I want to show y'all the front of the place here. And as we were headed here, I actually remembered that this used to be a bar called like Coyotes or something. Yep. And I was like, I, I bet you that's where we're headed. And sure enough, uh, so here's the, the front of their place goes fire. And it's kind of cool because Shane was telling me about how he got tattooed down here. Yep, right here on the, the very end, back in probably 1991-92. I got my first tattoo when I was 18 years old. Ran up here, got a tattoo. Back then it was bikers that did tattoos. And uh, you know, there was only, shit, I think he was the only one in Shreveport back then. There may have been another guy, but this is where everybody went. And it was real sketchy and kind of, you know, <laughs> felt like you were doing something bad, you know, sneaking in, going in the tattoo shop, letting the old biker tattoo you. You came out just feeling like a badass. But yeah, that's where, uh, that's where I got tattooed and, uh, you know, come full circle. I've opened up a shop over here on the other end of the building, so. That's pretty cool, man. So, when I was being born, you were here getting tattooed. That's right. And now fast forward, we're down here and you're tattooing That's me. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Now I'm the old biker dude tattooing. Yeah, now, I was gonna say, <laughs> now you're the old biker down here doing tattoos. So hopefully somebody will tell that story. But yeah, come in and check the place out. Yeah, so uh, when I set this tattoo shop up, I wanted it to look like uh, how it was when I got tattooed, how it was when you went into a tattoo shop. This is pre-cell phone days, you know, pre-Google, pre-internet. But you went in, it was like a blockbuster. You went in and uh, a lot of the flash would have prices on them or a little sticker, whatever. And if you had 50 bucks to your name, like that's probably about all I had, which took me, you know, months to save. I would go in with my $50 and look at what designs were, you know, 50 bucks. 
and you know choose a design that way and that's how people did you know it'd be 50 100 200 whatever whatever you had in your pocket and you would go in and with no clue what you were going to get that day you just went in looked around you know oh yeah i want this and that's what you did and, you know oh. that's kind of how i wanted to look uh when you walked in here um pre cell phone days pre-internet days it, it's cool because a lot of places like guys you gotta understand when you like traditional you like traditional and there's not a lot of other stuff you really like that's right so when, when you walk into a tattoo shop most of the time you only see like one piece of traditional flash or two pieces everything's you know m more modern nowadays of course so when you get to walk into a place and see a lot of traditional right. if you're a traditional person it looks awesome that's right these are the tattoos that look like tattoos you know these are the tattoos that's going to last a lifetime uh you know, and not, you know that's kind of the reputation we have as a traditional tattoo Bold shop. Bold will hold. That's right, and uh, that's what I wanted. You know, this, this is what I like to tattoo. This is what I like to get tattooed, and uh, we wanted you to have plenty of choices. And uh, these are all classic designs. They they're meant to be done over and over, and have been done over and over from the years. We redraw them, we recreate them, or you can just pick one of these old classic designs, and you know we'll slap it on you. If you're brave enough, you can do the little spin wheel of death here, because once you spin it, whatever it lands on is what you get. That's right. Yep, those are all hand drawn by us, and uh, we switch them out every time you get one. We put a new one on there in its place. See, we would just got the crying baby. <laughs> Y'all can see Shane went to the Harbor Freight. Got the nice white toolboxes throughout here. Uh, back here, you got a lot of flash. Uh, not just traditional back here though there's a lot of traditional but they they give you a little you know other artwork to look at but talking about you know him saying you can redo them they're meant to be done again or you can change them up a little bit right there sailor jerry piece i got the same tattoo right there and shane kind of drew his version of that one he put it right there on my forearm you can't go wrong with traditional guys no. yeah, it's awesome to see you, man super proud of you for doing it it's uh it's awesome to see you know the straight shop yeah to the little bit better shop to your own shop that's so right. that's, right. that's awesome i feel nauseous believe me never had a lot of sh come easy had to work hard struggle just to be me had to rise up just so they could see me did what I had to do just to feed me And what was left over I put towards my dreaming But the only thing in life that has meaning Are the things you gotta work for, believe me Take into your hands a plan Your own hands can land your own brand And damn, I feel like no one takes accountability They want the credibility Convincingly unwilling to put in the f hours It takes to get some power Don't be f***ing sour Take a cold shower Scream until you're louder Work until you're prouder And f*** all the doubters They're just your downers I swear to God they all let me down I always fought just to wear the crown I'm off at these f***ing clowns Who were all taught they deserve an ounce It's only worth it if you work for it It's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown Do 
there. All right, and welcome back, guys. Uh, now, I did not do the best of recording when I was down there, but to be honest, it was kind of nice to check out, not have the camera in my face every, you know, two seconds. And just spend some time talking with my buddy, uh, you know, having a good time, me and him getting to catch up. So I started doing some searching back and or like, and you know, I was looking on Facebook or whatever, looking back in the histories. And the first time Shane tattooed me, what was it? July like 12th or something like that of 2022. July something of 2012, not 2022. That would have been last year. <laughs> so he has been tattooing me for a very long time. And I think I mentioned it, uh, but he started off in a, a shop that did, did a lot of like street, like just walk-ins, crank out as many as you can in a day. And uh, I was one of his first people where he really got to, you know, work on his traditional style like that. There wasn't a lot of people down there getting it. And uh, before I had moved away from down there, he had moved into a better shop around there and he's getting to do more of it. But it was super awesome getting to see, you know, that Shane was able to open his own shop in the last couple of years and it's doing well for him down there. So I'm super proud of him. It's awesome to see, you know, how far he's came. Uh, and we were just talking about stuff like that, you know. I, I'm super happy for him. Now, I did bad enough tattooing, or not tattooing, I did not tattoo nobody. I did bad enough recording that I did not even show y'all uh, the tattoo when it was done. And it's been, of course, peeling and drying and itching. Holy cow, does this thing itch. I'd rather sit through the pain again than put up with the itching I've experienced these last few days here, three or four. Now, it doesn't seem to be shirtless, so I ain't gonna be modest at this point. So hopefully y'all can see it. Kinda, maybe, maybe if I get closer or maybe I get further away. We work this angle or we work that angle. I'm really pumped with how this tattoo's looking. Uh, so come to find out, we have a baby shower to attend for Ashley's friend in some upcoming months. So when we go down there for that, uh, I'm gonna go try to see him back to back and get this sucker uh, colored in. I know people had some questions already. I think I seen on like the Instagrammer or something when I posted a picture. Uh, people want to know how many hours did it take? I think the outline of the angel, we did roughly in like three and a half hours that first day. And then the roses with the stars and dots filler was probably a couple hours worth the next day. So Shane has been tattooing for so long that he has really bad neck pain which has limited him to the point of doing three to four hour ses sessions max. Uh, but I need to check on him because this week he was supposed to be getting a neck surgery and hoping to correct some of that. Uh, that dude is very passionate about art. When he's not tattooing, he's drawing, he's painting, he's always improving. Another question I know someone's gonna ask is how did the numbing cream work? And actually in some areas, really good. Like in some areas, Anywhere I had a little more muscle or meat up in here, some of it, I literally couldn't even feel it. I could feel that they, like he was pushing, but there wasn't no pain. Now, as we got a little closer to that spine, that was a different story. As we got down the spine and closer to the tramp stamp area, uh, shit the bed, that was hurting. But yes, that stuff definitely helped. I put more on the next day to help with the roses and everything. And overall, not too bad, guys. And that's the first time I've ever used that stuff. Uh, my chest, I don't remember how many hours we had on it. It was a lot. My stomach, I remember it was like a five to six hour tattoo. And uh, we just whole shot at it one sitting one time. And talk about some pain. Man, talk about some pain. Uh, this area hurts right here. Woo, that sternum. Just give you the heebie-jeebies thinking about it. I remember, I literally remember, and this has been seven years ago probably eight years ago when he was doing the lines on this spider web starting right here and as he went down you can just feel the pain increase like a quarter of the way down the pain's double half the way down triple three quarters of the way down quadruple by the time you make it to the bottom fifth tuple the pain it sucked and those guys at the tattoo shop at the time i remember them being like Oh, you got it. That ain't nothing. Blah, blah, blah. So-and-so did this. 
did that, whatever, and they were acting like I was being a sissy about it. And then by the time I finished it all, they were like, there ain't no way in hell I would have done that in one sitting. <laughs> they tricked me. Now the last question, which I don't know would be a question, but I'm sure people are like curious like the why the traditional. And guys, I just like the, the plain, the simple, you know, traditional. Usually you're using around, you know, four colors, yellow, red, some green, and later on you would get some blues and other stuff but that's why a lot of my colors are the same colors uh this is this is the style of old school tattooing to me uh the guys that i look up to the guys who i think were nitty gritty willing to do what they had to do for families for their nation at the time you think back of the old timers in the you know 50s 60s over there getting tattooed uh, this was the style they were getting tattooed in guys and really I'm not into other styles of tattoos and I'm not a uh, oh Support tattooed this support tattooed that I, I don't wear that kind of stuff or whatever for me It's just what I like and it's on my body and I like how it looks just like I like old-school cars and you know retro this or antique that the tattoos is just another one of those things that I, I like and when I was in the military, the first year or two, I would say I was actually probably at the lowest point in my life as far as I moved away from friends and family. I did not enjoy necessarily the people who was running the shop that I was in. Uh, one in individual in particular made life hell where it was just enjoy no way enjoyable to go to work you literally dread it you know and yeah i had a friend or two or whatever down there but it wasn't the same family and friends that you had your whole life you know i didn't have anywhere i'd work on my truck as i could in the parking lot but i didn't even have no money to work on my truck you know what i mean i couldn't fix nothing up i didn't have the cash to spend uh, but i could afford paper and pencil and uh, i actually started drawing a lot of my first things which is why they don't look the best uh but at the time it was a outlet for me to you know get some energy out or you know clear my brain at the time or you know just whatever you want to call it and i actually still have a lot of the drawings you know i'm just not a i'm not a sit around and watch tv or watch this or watch that kind of person i'd rather be doing something so drawing was a way for me to be able to do something and also learn some new skills yeah yo hey oh hey we're gonna finally be able to hang up some artwork in our new place before too long i've literally been collecting stuff for a big shop since i was probably 16 you know and uh early 20s i started gathering up some of this stuff a little bit cooler art when i'd make it to car shows and stuff uh but you know everyone's like oh yeah you made this youtube money and look at you just getting a shop yeah like i always said i would guys it was always the goal to work my hind end off till i had no hind end left with the goal of getting me a bigger shop and my girls a bigger house and that's what i'm doing and in the process of and I can catch hate and push back for that. I don't understand, but that's all right. That's another discussion for another video. Hey, did y'all hear they're bringing Mini Truck and Magazine back? Uh, we need to get them to do a, a cover on the, the Datsun now that it's been revamped. So this book, for a fact, I know I had when I was 18, right out of high school, trying to draw sugar skulls before you could, you know, go to walmart and get them everywhere because they weren't sugar skulls weren't trending in 2009 i promise you that oh there is my rent house and i think i was probably trying to draw a lean-to shop of some sort you know i was trying to figure out at that time how to get any type of shop right there i was studying for some math because i was trying to figure out if i was going to try to go to college or go to the military and well i knew i wasn't cut out for college I drew this. That was a monster hand to shifter with the flying eyeball shift knob. Shit the bed. Y'all see that? I designed, I did not know this was in here. I designed a C-channel bumper with dim dimple dies. There's one for towing. There's two trailer balls for that were upside down for dragging sparks. I, apparently I was going to get a license plate that said bad mofo. Hush it.
Apparently I was gonna get a license plate that said bad mo fo. Now at the time, I would have had no clue how to build that, but why I said that's crazy or was surprised is, I ended up building that bumper even though I forgot I designed it when I was 18 apparently. Cause here's the bumper I built for that Datsun. Uh, fast forward a decade and a half later. And that day I was, uh, I was stacking some dimes. That's what I was doing that day. But uh, that's pretty wild. I mean, she styled a little different, but pretty close to the same. I was drawing dreams when I was 18 and it took me, you know, 12 years to uh, trying and doing this and doing that to start making them happen. And then, yeah. You know, you make them goals finally happen after pushing a decade and well, you just changed. I've been trying to change, guys. I've been pushing. I've been pushing. I don't want to get on this, but it is relevant to talking with Shane because me and Shane kind of talked about that. Ain't it weird how, you know, it can even be people you know sometimes. Maybe it's people you don't know. But when you're struggling and you're starting off, everyone tells you they want to support you. They want to see you make it. You want to see you. They want to see you make it. Well, you do all this grinding uh you know sometimes working 18 hour days a lot of time working 18 hour days for years on end to to get you and your family or you and your shop or you and your business where you want it to be and then when you make it to that point some of the same people who said they support you will hit you with the well it must be nice and this and that and it's like just because i finally you know or like shane finally figured it out you know and made some crap happen well it must be nice uh you know it, it wasn't handed to him he earned it that ain't a it must be nice moment that's a give your buddy a hug and tell him i'm damn proud of you moment guys got a flying eyeball oh boy apparently i was gonna build a gas powered scooter of some sort trike and hey looked like i was trying to draw up a little mark action two-door sedan like i always thought i wanted to build it all quote unquote rat rotted out and chopped and channeled through the roof so going to early mini truck shows i would always notice the uh any vendors that could build a brand that could sell at mini truck shows they had lines of people wanting to buy their shirts well apparently i was going to try to start a poor boy's clothing that was going to be the brand baby you come out that 69 single wide out of you know middle of nowhere rattlesnake hill oklahoma and you ain't got no money to start with and you try to think up a clothing brand apparently you just call it what it is poor boy's clothing yeah oh lucky number 77 and this is when i first was kind of trying to study pinstriping and dabble with some of it so I, I would practice in here a couple designs before i'd go practice on a datsun tailgate that's good stuff right there guys i mean you can see in there where i came from and today i get to piddle with the same kind of stuff and i you know, he's changed. So I still like the same stuff, guys. All right. Portfolio. Hey, does that look familiar? Oh. Puddin's fab on the door on this one. Uh, being on this paper, this would have been when I was probably 16 to 17 working for the county. Here's that old praying hands. And we ain't going through all these drawings because we'd be out here for about four and a half hours. Uh, but to show you some of the first ones I did, when I was down there, there we go, just knock those down. Here's an Air Force one, uh, not really good looking. You can look at some of the roses I was trying to do. Uh, homesick, that was a fact back then. A bomb, wing nut, uh, some terrible looking little flower things, you know. Uh, seasick with, it looks like a kindergartner colored it. And that is how I started drawing. And uh, I took one, and I went into the tattoo shop and by coincidence, uh, they were really busy that day. And I said to the guy at the counter, I wanted something traditional, even though I didn't even know what traditional was at the time. I thought it was that crap I was drawing. And uh, Shane was in the back and he heard me say traditional and he skipped a lot of people in line luckily. And he pulled me inside. He's like, well, you got, you need done traditional. And that was this one. This was the first tattoo we ever did together. Puddin's fabrication. Uh, as I continued to, uh, you know just draw and dabble in it it got to the point where i would take some of my stuff in there to shane when i'd get tattooed and i'd have them critique it and tell me what i was doing right or what i was doing wrong or whatever and uh it finally made it to a point where i did a uh a flash sheet and i took it in there and he was like yeah i think you could sell that and he didn't critique nothing it wasn't change this change that it was the first time i got his approval 
I've got it somewhere around here. Hey, look at that Oklahoma. I've literally got just folders of line drawings. Some of them I'd finish out. Some of them I didn't finish out. Here's one I did of Bill the Butcher from uh, Gangs of New York. Here's one I did of me uh, putting a little paper boy hat on me and a big old neck tattoo and stuff. You know, you gotta have fun with it. So I bottled out pudding pops back in the day. Now I said something in a video not too long ago about uh, Unknown Henson. And uh, I actually drew Unknown Henson. This is the copied version uh, because the original version I took to him uh, I met him, gave it to him framed, and then Unknown Henson autographed this, and is a guitar player and bass player or drum player. I don't remember exactly what he had because I was drinking entirely too much that night, and I probably plumb got on this gentleman's nerves, and uh, I apologize about that. But anyhow, yeah, I drew Unknown Henson, and then I got to take it to him and meet him, which was pretty cool. And just over the years, uh, I just kind of figured out some traditional style a little bit better little double-headed shark right there that don't look familiar and before anyone ask uh no i never tattooed anyone no i won't okay so don't be like hey you can tattoo me i won't do it <laughs> puddin's tattoos we just set up shop in here and we just we just bang them out just a walk through line you get 10 minutes a piece that's all you're getting from me if that means a smiley face by golly you're getting a smiley face so i wanted to show you that and i went off on some little things here or there and got distracted uh but i drew for probably a good five years of my life and it was an important five years of my life and that's another reason why i get the tattoos besides just liking them and i want them but a lot of y'all want to know the meaning behind a lot of my tattoos and i figured that could be the last thing that we cover in this whole little tattoo you know video so we're going to start here so i can button this up and put away these pectoral muscles whoops, whoops, whoops. The butterfly gypsy girl, what does it mean to me? Well, one time I was uh, stuck in a spider web. That's why I got the spider web right here. And uh, the spider is about to get me. And I had a premonition that one of these flew up, these gypsy head girls with butterfly wings. And she saved me. And because uh, that spider almost got me. And that's why I decided to get this because it meant a lot to me. Next up, we got the work life. Well, that's because I was about it, about it. I've always been about that work life. Boy, it is toasty in here. Just baking in here. We got the working class tattoo. Uh, I got that anvil with that whenever I won the national blacksmithing competition. That is not true. Uh, I got the flower because once when I was a kid, uh, this man handed me a flower and I just never wanted to forget it. Now right there we got a parrot because I went to a little swim shop one time next to the lake when I was down there and there was a parrot that talked so I just got a parrot. Uh, the Sailor Jerry tattoo I got because in second grade I met a kid and his name was Jerry and I just wanted to get a Sailor Jerry tattoo for him. Uh, I got a moth right there because the night I was driving to the tattoo shop in my old 69 Chevy you know bugs get in there because they're not sealed up the best and i leave the windows down and you know how they like to hide up there between the dash and the windshield where there's one there as i got going this moth flew up and it hit me in the mouth and i did the <laughs> number to get the moth away so then i felt bad for hurting the moth when i spit it out so i got a moth uh for it as tribute right there i got a hatchet because when i was a kid i liked playing with hatchets uh, right there, I got a gold tooth just because I got a gold tooth. Uh, that one says never again with a propeller and an eagle. And that did mean I would never do the military again, but that's not true. Actually, I would do it again uh, if it's what our nation needed. So Uncle Sam, give me a ring-a-ding. Helicopter me in. Behind enemy lines, I'll whip that ass, bring me back so I can at least have some dinner with my family. We'll be good. Two-headed shark because one time... I was at the ocean, I seen two sharks pop their head out, and they did it at the same time, and I thought it was a two-headed shark, but turns out it's just two sharks, I'm just an idiot. And I got a fly right there, just because when you're out here working, you get hot and sweaty, flies land on you occasionally, so I just got one to uh, commemorate my best fly I've had so far, his name was Teddy. Got an arrowhead, uh, because... <laughs> I got an arrowhead because uh, people say I'm as sharp as a rock, so I wanted a sharp rock on me 
I got an anchor because uh, one time we went in a little, I built this, this is a true story. Uh, I built a boat that I put out in our pond. It was built out of like probably three inch thick styrofoam boards that someone had hauled out to our place. And I like caulked it together and I made it halfway through our pond and it broke and I was like an anchor, I was just sinking. What else is here? Well, I got whatever that was because I got the cannon because I'm explosive. I got this bad luck because uh, some days you just have bad luck. And I got a crawfish lady uh, because, you know, I used to like crawfish and ladies. Now over here, I got that one. It's like got racing looking goggles on its head with some pistons. That's after I set the land speed record in the Yeehaw. I went and got that one done. Uh, I got a diamond because they're forever, just like the tattoo, that's what that one means. I got a horseshoe, because they're supposed to be lucky, and over here I had bad luck, so I just thought I needed some good luck. And right there we got the captain's wheel, and one time I was chartering a ship and we lost it, and I just wanted to get that ship, captain's wheel, to help me remember that moment. Oh, we got the dagger going through there. One time I got in a pirate fight, and I didn't want to forget, forget that I whipped him, so that's where that one comes in. Uh, we got some broken chains because you can't hold me down. That's what that one means. <laughs> I will break free. Uh, we got some old iron nails like a blacksmith would make right there. And I got them because that's what I won the blacksmith competition with. <laughs> uh, we got the little hell bomb. I actually got that after we flew a couple bomber missions uh, back in... 1952 we kept them on our radar most people didn't know about them i was on that flight that's why i got the bomb right there that says good luck because that's what we dropped on we dropped that bomb we looked out the bay doors and said good luck so those actually go together right there we got a swallow and we're not gonna make any jokes about that because that could head south real quick we got a spark plug and it's upside down because i told shane i wanted a spark plug and he put it on and i never looked at it and he tattooed it and then when i looked in the mirror i said hey it's upside down that was one of the first ones we did together. We got the headdress, dead skull, because I'd be careful, don't want to offend nobody. And some of this stuff up here, Shane did not do this one, this one, or the Frankenstein on the back. Uh, he did kind of help cover up some of the stuff that was up here. But these are the we don't talk abouts. Those are just things that I wanted when I was 19, 20-ish. But that's okay, because we ain't got to talk about them, because we got some legs to go over, and I can tell you all the meanings of them. The spider webs on my knees, uh, I got those whenever I got caught up in that same spider web right there. And yeah, it's on that elbow too, because I was stuck in that spider web good. So I uh, I just wanted to put some down there. There right there is little Hiawatha. He's from like a 1937 Disney cartoon, and it was always my favorite one. So I just figured I'd get him right there on my leg with that little shiny hiney. Uh, that one there says dad, and it's got the, you know, just old school saw. And because that's how I grew up, watching my dad work with the, you know, bare minimum and always making it work. Uh, down there, we got a pink camper. I told you I'd break out of them chains. Uh, they tried to chain me at the ankle, but I got out of them too. Right there, we got a mom heart with a rose and that's just because i love my mom and that uh, uh what's that oh it's a little rope with the ship sinking in there yeah so i didn't just sink the ship so the one the one ship i lost and i got the the captain's wheel right there underneath my pinky uh, that was for one boat loss uh this one here was for another so yeah i've been i've been sinking boats since i built my first styrofoam one uh, right there, we got the slippery snaky snake coming out. If I strike you, baby, it's venom. On the back, we've got a big old eagle. That's because if you don't like this country and I need to put some freedom in your ass, I will do it with this foot and this leg. My eagle gives me more kicking power to boot you uh, right where the good Lord split you. I think that covers this one. Uh, well, we got the virgin on the front and uh, the 77. And then over here... Uh, I won the blacksmithing thing a couple years in a row, so that's why I just got two of them, because that makes sense. Uh, I used to empty every bottle or beer can I could get my hands on. Uh, I got this one because I used to be a little prick. <laughs> I got that one because there's sheep and there's wolves out there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live and be a wolf. Get me howling at the moon. Uh, oh boy, the rooster. 
we're gonna skip that one for joke jokes reasons whatever uh, we'll just say i like eating chicken right there you ain't gonna get nowhere if you never roll the dice and then over here right there we got the tp and i use a lot of toilet paper so i just thought i'd get a tp and i think other than my butt that i'm not going to show y'all because there there is one on each of there i've got a buffalo on one and a scissor tail which is a bird on the other and that's the oklahoma state bird and i got them because my ass belongs in oklahoma and i think we're up to date oh i didn't show y'all the oaky that's because they always said i was always a little angry oaky so i just got me as a four-year-old there and that concludes the puddin's fab shop tattoo tour with the meanings behind each and every one of them. All right, guys, obviously I was just playing around there, and if you're someone who takes tattoos super serious or whatever, and they have to have meanings to you, and that somehow offended you, I do apologize. Uh, but to me, you know, I didn't pick out my house color because it had any certain meaning to me. I don't choose what I'm gonna wear because it has any certain meaning to me. I don't only buy a certain vehicle because it has a specific meaning to me. Uh, I buy vehicles I like. I get cl clothes, put in fab shop shirts that I like, uh, sketchers that I like. I know they're not fashionable, but damn it, they're comfortable and I like them. Well, with tattoos, guys, I just get what I like. Oh, and stars and dots. We didn't go over that. Everyone says, I like your stars and dots. Guys, that ain't stars and dots. Uh, that's that, that represents ceiling fans because I like ceiling fans. So I just got a million of them on me, a little five-blade ceiling fan. I do have a few that have real deal meaning to me. And you can see there's some influence of probably my mindset and stuff like working class. And, you know, the blacksmith to me, they're the first customizers, builders, uh, probably people, if I was around when you had the blacksmith to manipulate metal, they would have been the guys I looked up to. And so, I mean, th there's some thought in some of them, but there ain't diddly in that parrot. I just really like the parrot. Yeah, this one here, uh, that's got my brother's initials and a little clover for him. He's no longer with us. Uh, so this one actually does have some meaning to me. I didn't show this one. Uh, Shane did not do this. This is the only tattoo I've let someone else do since I've uh, first, or since I met Shane and he started tattooing me, it says 100K hot damn. And it's got the silver play button, kind of like the silver black plaque they send you. Well, that leg's a pasty white background, ain't it? And of course, it has a, a little meaning to me. So, I know some of y'all's been asking for the tattoo tour for a long time. And there you go. You got to see me get tattooed. You got to hear some of how I got to liking tattoos. You got to see some of my drawing influence inspired by tattoos on how it relates to me today in my business today and then you got the full tattoo tour and you've seen it here exclusively first at the puddin's fabrication shop i appreciate all the support from you guys uh puddin's fab shop dot puddin's .com for some of that good quality merchandise uh if you want to check out me on the Instagram, or I'm on there. Shane's on the Instagram, or if y'all want to give him a follow, and his tattoo shop's on the Instagram, or I'm on the Patreon. And I will see you guys next time. I'm getting out of this oven because I'm sitting there baking. I'm going to bake this tattoo ink clean out of me. Uh, I will see you guys next time. But do not forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. Hot damn, there's so much bs -ery. We had to start a whole channel for all the extras. Be sure to go check out Puddin's Fab Shop if you ain't seen that baby yet. Come on! <laughs> well, get it. Get out that I'm baby. i out there howling at the moon. <laughs> <laughs> you see, see, see Jacob run, running across the field, bud. <laughs> He's barking. I already <laughs> see the fellow with him. He's <laughs> squeal like a pig. Eeyong. <laughs> <laughs> Eeyong. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.